Honestly, I'm just blown away by some of the cool things that people are creating with Spark AR. I've seen things like this, this, and yeah, even this. Pretty cool, right? I'm loving it. Let's hop right into learning how to get into Spark AR. I'm super excited. I know you are too. All right, let's go. What's up everybody, it's your boy Nate. So as a VFX artist and motion designer, I'm absolutely blown away. If you've been on Instagram or Snapchat in the past few years, you'd probably know that right now, some of the best and most impressive uses of facial recognition are literally at our fingertips. Even cooler is that now there's a completely free software from Facebook called Spark AR Studio, which lets us create our own custom augmented reality setups and really get to utilize all the advancements that they have with facial recognition. It's surprisingly super easy to do. I guarantee that with just a few minutes of learning the ins and outs of the program, you're gonna be able to make something really dope. I'm super excited. I know you are too. All right, let's go. So if you've never heard of Spark AR or even augmented reality, it's basically a way to use your phone's camera and sensors to create live visual effects that look grounded in reality. There's a bunch of cool features of Spark AR, but by far my favorite has to be the fact that it's just so easy to use. So easy in fact that I guarantee that you can make some really dope graphics without knowing every little detail of the program or any coding at all. Insane, right? Also, Spark AR has a really cool partnership with one of my favorite 3D resources available called Sketchfab. So off the bat, you get access to literally hundreds of thousands of quality 3D assets and a built-in importer, but I'm getting way ahead of myself. Let's just hop right into the program. Okay, so as you can see, I'm in Spark AR right now, and this first window that pops up lets us start out by using one of their cool pre-made templates. Pretty nice that whenever we hover over it, we get a little live preview, but we're not gonna use any of these templates right now. We're gonna start from scratch. So let's go ahead and click on create a new blank project. The first thing that you're gonna see is this black dude, it's pretty cool. I see you Facebook, you're getting progressive app. And before you guys freak out and wonder why this guy is doing some sort of sobriety test before freaking out that you're there, just know that this is actually a preview window. So as we start to make changes, you're gonna see that this preview will live update and you'll be able to make sure the effect works on various skin tones, head angles, facial expressions, and lighting conditions. We can change the preview person by clicking on this camera icon right here, which brings up a whole crew of diverse people. Honestly, I'm pretty impressed by the diversity because this looks way better than Call of Duty's character selection screen. Also, if you wanna just preview on yourself and not use one of these pre-made people, you can click on this button right here, which should say whatever the name of the webcam is that you have installed. If you wanna change the size of the preview window, you can actually click on this button right here, which is gonna let us change it from an iPhone 8 size to pretty much anything that you want. And we can even go ahead and rotate the camera, flip it around by clicking on these two buttons down here. So this is already pretty cool. You got the gist of the setup. Go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back because you are about halfway done into knowing how to start getting around in Spark AR. So let's go ahead and add something to this face. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna do in order to add something to this is click on this button here which says add object and I'm gonna select face mesh. Okay, so this is looking pretty cool already just looking at this guy and if you're live previewing it like I am sometimes, it is gonna make you wanna do some silly faces, but you're gonna notice that this face mesh comes equipped with a texture already that is checkered, which actually represents a no texture to make sure that it's working. But let's go over here to the right side panel once we have face mesh selected, and we're gonna get all these options, but let's click on materials, and down there we're gonna click add material, which is pretty much just gonna create a new material, and it's gonna let us change the color, visibility, and render settings of this face mesh. So already pretty cool, and once we have this face mesh setup, we can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. So I'm thinking let's do something pretty easy like add some 3D glasses to this or maybe even a hat to get started. In order to do that, I'm gonna go down in the bottom left here and I'm gonna click on add asset. And then I'm gonna click import from AR library. This next window that pops up is going to show us all these different models from Sketchfab. And we can just type in the search bar right here, whatever we want. So I'm gonna type in glasses or goggles, whatever is gonna get me the model that I want. Ooh, okay, so this one looks 
pretty nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and click download and import it. Once that's done, I'm gonna see it down here in the assets panel. I'm gonna drag it up to where the face mesh is located. So off the bat, I noticed that it doesn't match perfectly and that's because we're gonna have to mess around with the transformation options. Sure, it gets the rotation and the movements down, but the scale is just way off. And so the way to fix this is let's go ahead and click on this pause button, which is gonna pause the head. So I'm gonna click on the glasses in the scene window and then on the right panel over here, we're gonna see some options appear. The ones that we're most going to be concerned with are the transformation options. And you're gonna see position, rotation, scale. Most of the time, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to fix is the scale. That's because most of these models are created with various scales and all sorts of settings. So yeah, just be prepared to have to do that pretty much every time that you import a model. You can either change it here on the right by typing in the values, or we can go ahead and click on this button right here, which represents scale. Click and drag on this box that appears to make sure that everything stays uniform as we scale it down. So that's looking pretty decent, but I'm going to change the position rotation, which I can find also by clicking on these icons or on the right, whichever is easier for you. You're probably gonna have to mess around the values as you see fit. So don't really worry about what I put here on the screen because depending on the model that you're using, the values are gonna vary. Also, no need to worry about being super perfect here, especially when you're just getting started. Just make sure you have fun with it. This is looking pretty good position wise, but I wanna see how these glasses look without the face mesh there. And so the way that we're gonna do this is by clicking down to the materials in the assets panel and click on the face mesh material. And then we're gonna change the opacity on the right to zero. This keeps the face mesh there to block or occlude the head from the glasses models while not occluding the face from the actual camera. Pretty cool, huh? Anyways, this is looking good and to save it out, I'm gonna hit file save and then I can either test it on my device or I can go ahead and try and upload it to the Spark AR Hub. Just note that when you upload the effect to the Spark AR Hub, it may take a few days to process and you're gonna have to have a little bit more stricter quality control guidelines so already this one that we just made, pretty cool that we get this summary so we can see how we can improve. Facebook and Instagram have different size requirements. And this looks just about done and hopefully by following along, you're able to now test out your Spark AR effect using your phone. And you would have gone from a complete noob to at least decently familiar with Spark AR. Now there's a whole bunch of cool features of Spark AR. This is just scratching the surface of it. So if this is something that you enjoy and wanna learn more about, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we're gonna be going over all kinds of cool tutorials, randomizers, interactive elements, animations. So let me know down below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. As always, hope to catch you on the next one. Peace.